Welcome to the Feminine Mistake Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Nicole, and today I am joined by Hillary, Sarah, Helen, Valerie. On today's Lady Bits, we will be tackling a topic on women in film, and today's topic is the Molly Ringwald article, uh, sort of looking back and reflecting on her time working on John Hughes films, and uh, so we're going to be digging into that as well as some other uh, revisitations of sex scenes uh, that we saw uh, far too young. So enjoy uh, today's Lady Bits, and let's get into it. Oh, you men are all alike. Seven or eight quick ones and you're off with the boys to boast and brag. You better keep your mouth shut. Uh, welcome to our Lady Bits episode. This is where we do a wild card topic on women in film. And today's topic is uh, the Molly Ringwald article Ooh. about the bre- about revisiting The Breakfast Club and other John Hughes movies oh. in the era of the Me Too movement. Have you guys heard of and or read this article it's okay if you haven't of it and have not read it oh okay um you guys i sent it to you guys um um i thought this would be a good topic because i know you guys have seen a lot because you guys watch a lot of romantic comedies Mm -hmm. and uh, we grew up in the era of these movies so i thought it would be a good topic so basically uh just to summarize especially if the audience hasn't um read this article molly ringwald who starred of course in 16 candles and the breakfast club and lots of other john hughes movies Mm -hmm. um was kind of his muse in a way pretty and pink yes very much um she recently wrote an article for the new york the new yorker sorry this isn't the new york times it's the new yorker sort of reflecting back on some of those movies because she had watched the breakfast club with her daughter who was 10 years old and um, in she, watching She it, does comment and say that it's a little young. I saw your face. And no, like, yeah. no, I mean, I watched it when I was younger than okay. 10. Yeah. But I just, I just, I got excited because I knew it doesn't hold up very well for yeah. a 10-year-old today. Yeah. Well, she, so she was a little worried about it, um, but the most, but what she, but her daughter didn't pick up on a lot of the sexual stuff as most kids, it just kind of washes over them. But one thing that was a, a, a bit of an uncomfortable moment and something that really bothered Molly Ringwald was re-watching the scene where, John Bender, the uh, played. By, God, what the fuck is that actor's name? I'm li- totally drawing a blank. Um, oh, Judd Nelson. Um, Judd Nelson. Mm-hmm. Judd Nelson's under the table, hiding from the principal, and he looks up her skirt, mm-hmm. and we see her underwear, mm-hmm. and then we see Molly Ringwald's underwear a lot. And then days. off screen, because we don't see him do it, he very obviously sticks his hand in there because you see her react to it. Uh-huh. Actually, I think yeah. it's his face because she. I remember in the film, yeah, she, she squeezes like squeezes his, his yeah. head with her knees to get him to stop. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Helen, you look upset. I'd put it out of my mind. We yeah, all had. I had forgotten about that scene too. Just, just By give the you way, a bit of comfort. It yeah. wasn't her. It wasn't her. It was not she was her under. In, she was a minor. That yeah. was an adult woman. She was woman's only sixteen underwear. years old. Yeah. That, that wasn't her. That I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They didn't yeah. even ask her to film the scene, and I, I think she even mentions in the article that they asked her to cut. Uh, she asked to cut it. Her mother they, did. Her yeah, mother her. said, "I, I'm not really comfortable with this," and they kept it in. Anyway. That makes me happy. And, that well, they she were talks about how she was embarrassed about yeah. it. And yeah, that, that was such a shame. So that was kind of the starting point for her writing this article. Um, a couple other things. So before we get into talking about it, the, a couple other things they discussed were um, they discussed sixteen candles mm-hmm. and some of those scenes, yeah. like how. Um, Anthony Michael Hall's character yes. steals her underpants. But the big thing was that she actually called the actress who played, I'm sorry, I've got it written Caroline. down here, Listen. Caroline, um, the girlfriend mm-hmm. of the romantic interest mm-hmm. in the movie, who Jake gets Ryan. really drunk. She gets mm-hmm. she gets really drunk, and Jake Ryan ends up giving her to yes. Anthony Michael Hall mm-hmm. um, for the underpants. And then the next day, it's kind of implied that maybe he had sex with her yeah. Yeah. while yeah. she was yeah. wasted. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, it's Do you this, remember anything? And she's like, no, but I have a feeling I enjoyed it or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It's just very, like, the same thing happens in, like, uh, License to Drive with yes. like, Heather Graham mm-hmm. and the Corys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, are, there are very Lots few of movies date in the 80s jokes. that aren't rapey. Yeah. 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 Like, find yeah. a comedy without a fat joke. Mm-hmm. Find an 80s movie that's not rapey. Find an mm-hmm. 80s movie with boys trying to get laid that isn't, doesn't include some kind of date rape. Yeah. 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 Um, so Spying on girls sh- in the shower. Right. Mm-hmm. So she, well, yeah. So she called her up and they talked about this. And then, um, well, they went to coffee. They went to coffee. Right. Chatted. Yes. And uh, the actress was like, oh, well, I didn't really think about it that way. Mm-hmm. And still doesn't. No. Even upon reflection. 
Really? She, no, yeah. she didn't. She, she did she, call she, her she, late. She sent her an email later, and she was well, like, "Actually, come to think of it, that's yeah. fucking no, re- <laughs> a little no, bit." No, dude, reread that. I did. Reread no, that I, quote. I she says, it. "I feel less uncomfortable with it after reflection." Um, she says, "I feel less uncomfortable." No, she she says, "I feel a little uncomfortable." Let me get to it. And, but that maybe starts. Well, here, let me long. read the quote of what she said about it at coffee first. Okay. Uh, and then let's respond to that. I'm not saying that it's okay. This is um, the actress who played Caroline uh, Haviland Morris. I'm not saying it's okay to be raped or have non-consensual sex, but it's not a one-way street. Here's a girl who gets herself so bombed she doesn't even know what's going on. Oh, ouch. Oh, no. So that's what she said at coffee about it. Well, wait, can I see that really quickly? Because I want to find oh, the other quote. No, it's worse than Shailene Woodland. Okay. Woodland like, maybe I read it wrong, but I thought Shailene she said she was less Wood. uncomfortable with it. I think we all, I don't think there's much to discuss there. I think we all kind of look at that yeah. as like a date rape. Yeah. Obviously, the actors playing it didn't see it that way. Mm. Again, we have to, and this is something that's discussed and in the article. why would they, though? Because we're told that that's normal. Right, exactly. And it, it also wasn't a term, I think, that was no. uh, available to people at that time right. either. It was, you were a stupid girl. You were stupid. Yeah. You got you did something dumb. You mm-hmm. let your guard down. Well, but Molly Ringwald even asked her too, like, how would you feel if it was your daughter? And she oh, was yeah, just she like, she did say she was like, well, no, like I would, I would obviously not think that was okay. But she, yeah, she was just like, I'm not going to make it black and white. She yeah, was like, it's not she a black and white issue. There's a gray issue. area. Yeah. Um. So, it, it, uh, so is that here's gray the area named Bill Cosby? Because I didn't. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that's something that happened this week too. Oh, well, uh-huh. Hopefully, he's going to jail. You guys. What, what, what did she say after? Um. I, okay. Yeah. Smug bastard. He is. Later that night, I received another note. You know, she wrote, "The more I think of it this evening, oh, your note. The oddly, the less comfortable, the less uncomfortable I am with less Caroline. Less uncomfortable. Wow, I read that mm-hmm. wrong. Yeah, right. I read that wrong. She said I'm, I'm less, less uncomfortable. And it's fucking bold and in <laughs> all mm-hmm. gaps. Yeah. The less uncomfortable I am with Caroline. Jake was disgusted with her and said he could viol- violate her 17 ways if he wanted to because she was so trashed, but he didn't. And then Ted, which I oh, believe nice is guy. the John- Anthony Michael, Michael Hall's character, was the only one who had to ask if they had sex, which certainly doesn't demonstrate responsible behavior of either party but also doesn't really spell date rape. On the other hand, she was basically traded for a pair of underwear. Ah, John Hughes. <sighs> yeah, rest. I mean, this isn't a let's trash this actress no, party, but... And I mean, you're allowed to... But let's trash her while we're here now. You're allowed to feel however you want about I don't a role. Feel good and about I think, that. No, but I think that at the end of the article, like, I think Molly Ringwald summarizes it really well. Like, we have to... Like, erasing the past is not okay, and especially yeah. when you're an artist. Yes. You can't mm-hmm. erase it. That's the whole point of it. But when you're in that sticky situation where you've helped to create the art yeah. and you now look back and you're like, that wasn't OK. Take responsibility. Yeah. How do yeah. you do it? And then and she has a moment in the article where she's like, I, I'm really proud of the work that I did. And yet and yet and yet and yet and right. yet. And yeah. she just writes that yeah. over and over again. And I was like, I feel that way about mm-hmm. some of the stuff I've done. Yeah. But it is so human to, to rationalize the wrong that you've done. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't want uh, to be like, reframe it I in was a, a character that, that made okay. Daybreak look yeah. okay. Like, right. you don't want to feel that about the character you played either. You know, so I get that. Yeah. Well, and I, I hate to kind of bash this other generation, but... I, I feel like now we're coming into a movement of social justice and self responsibility mm-hmm. that, where it's uh, like I've had this happen before, where people have called me out for something I've said on Twitter or on Instagram sure, or yeah. something, and I have to take responsibility for it, and it's mm-hmm. not something that I can deflect on, and I I try to do that and just be like, fuck, I did, I messed yeah. up, I'll try better next time. I said time. a lot of dumb things, I've held a lot of shitty opinions, like, yeah, <sighs> and like I'm not perfect, and nobody is, and I think that we're moving into a space where like it is okay to be like. You know what? I did. I fucked up. I'm, yeah. I need to be better. And next also, time. well, you're an actor. You don't have to. Like, you don't you have say, to agree I with everything. You didn't write that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was acting. I did what do I was Do you think Havilah do. Morris is going to go out for coffee with Molly Ringwald after Not, this article? No, I doubt like it. <laughs> no, but I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Molly. Um, I, now, one thing we didn't Riverdale, get to, which way. is in here as well, killing is it. that we have to also put things into perspective in the sense that this was the 1980s and there weren't words like date rape, but also John Hughes. One of the things he celebrated for is actually giving teenager stories and actually, to be honest, giving female protagonists, like young yeah. teenage female protagonists, a story mm-hmm. and depth, which is something that did not exist in a world of porkies and right. animal house. Yeah, but after yep. like, reading what he wrote, like, well, those Rest were National Dawn. Lampoon articles, and that was right. the style of yeah. that. But it makes me wonder, like, how much book. of it was him, or like, not comic book, like, but 
innocently thinking she was this muse and like wanting to like have a strong female character and how much of it yeah. was him like s- s- sexualizing her and maybe when they began working maybe. together she was 14 yeah like, she was in ninth grade know, when she did weird. 16 Isn't that candles weird that an adult man is like i want to write films about you like well i don't know what the I conversation was but i think he really i mean i don't know i mean that's a fair question i do think that he was writing female characters at a time and mm-hmm. uh, potentially um, gay characters because yeah. Ducky yeah. Um, and, and the, was they talk a about, gay man. Yeah, they yeah. talk well, about the in this article that Ducky people have come up. Ducky was supposed to wind up with Molly Ringwald's character mm-hmm. in 16 Candles. So right. Pretty I'm, pink. Yeah. I'm Pretty in Pink. Pretty in pink What's yes. wrong with me? I've never, I've never actually seen Pretty in Pink. But he wrote three films for her. Like right. specifically for I don't know. He just never denied she wasn't amused. Well, he didn't write Breakfast Club for her. No, no, no. He, he, that he part. may have, but he may have written that part for her, but he, not sixteen can, can sixteen no. candles was oh. written for her because he and said for, for I I, I saw okay. her he saw her headshot oh. and wrote a movie based on what he thought oh. that girl was. I'm just in saying the like that's article weird. is what she says. I, I it's interesting I, and disturbing. It I is. see what you're saying. But I, I see I also, what you're saying. I, I mean headshots aren't an essence of who you are either. Like as an actor, when you go to take a headshot, it's not that's not who I am. It's who the I feel like I can play, you know, and it's yeah. who I'm putting out into the world and saying this is who I want to Although be. Although I do on think screen. the best had shots do capture a person's essence. I agree, but like it's it's not necessarily exactly who you are yeah. or anything like that. So I I don't know. I I try not to think about it as like super creepy. I mean, it's but... a fair point. Like this is a grown man writing stuff, but yeah. but mm-hmm. I feel like for the most part, at least with her character, most of that stuff that he wrote for her was pretty innocent like it yeah. wasn't mm-hmm. aside from this nonsense with the this stuff some of the stuff in the breakfast club is not but i don't remember the shooting of it ever being super like over sexualizing her as a character even the very disturbing shot of john bender looking at her underwear was not it there was it, it was shot memorable. in a very mm-hmm. well it was shot in very i would say unglamorous yeah. pov shot yeah it yeah. wasn't made to look like Mm-hmm. It wasn't soft focus. It wasn't lit in a particularly particularly lusty way. So I'm not I'm not trying to say that there isn't something problematic about this, but what I'm saying is I don't I didn't get sexual attraction from the parts that he wrote for her. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that there are clearly I think we can see a problem with the way we see masculinity and boys and sexuality that is left over from ha- how his generation felt about young girls. Yeah. Like that is clearly a, clearly a problem, mm-hmm. but also people weren't writing stuff like Pretty in Pink and 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 before him. Like there weren't characters like that. Like teenage girls were somebody you were trying to right. like get their panties off. It's the off. Joss Whedon problem. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. he did so much good. Yeah, but he also did a little bit of bad. Yeah, and like, yeah. yeah. Like he's an imp- he's importance. Yeah, what he did was importance. But was he perfect? No. And and how to compartmentalize that? And is this like do we escalate this? Is a co- is it a Cosby problem? I don't think it's a Cosby problem, but it's there are no allegations worth, about him like that. At. But I mean, it's a fair yeah. point to ask. Like yeah. I'd be so sad if there were allegations about that. Like, I mean, I right. remember where we were when John Hughes died. We were in the car with our mother and mm-hmm. our sister. Yeah, in I loved those movies. We got the push notification. We were driving in the snow. Yeah, and yeah. we it was. Very silent in the car. We yeah, all took the a whole moment. family. We just yeah. I mourned I've him at once. Seen those three films too, and I watched them when I was a kid, and I remember being uncomfortable with the uh, both of the uh, underwear things. Yeah, in, yeah, the in, hit, in, taking the in, underwears in, 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 in those films, Gross. and I did feel like she was like the hot girl in those mm-hmm. films. Like I did, like as a really? kid, I was like, she is. Oh, I thought she was the dork. I thought she I was identified the dork. her so much because no, she was I, the I dork. Think that I, to, in in my time, like she was looked at as the unusual dorky looking. Yeah. Like nobody, they never had like girls with red, short red no. hair in those mm-hmm. movies. Like that, yeah. that wasn't a beauty ideal, and so it was unusual to have somebody like her as the main character when this these films came out. Well, I think it I was felt that very unusual. Breakfast Club that she was like the cool, popular, pretty yeah. girl. But I I haven't seen Pretty in Pink, but I've seen Sixteen Candles, and like when I saw Sixteen Candles, like that movie, I because I was like angsty teen upset with my family and that movie just like broke my fucking heart just because like just the whole premise of somebody forgetting your birthday you know and i think i was maybe like 13 14 when i saw we haven't even covered the racism like that exists 
Um, so yeah, there are a lot of problematic things here. Um, I, but I think we're all having to like reflect on these movies, and that's kind of what we do yeah. here is like go back and reflect on these. And a lot of these were written without the perspective of like what a woman or a, an actual teenage girl mm-hmm. would have thought. Mm-hmm. Although there are other places in the article where she mentions that something that was in the film that she yeah, asked to be taken out. Her dad? Like where, where, what happened to your pain? pain? panties or what happened to your mm-hmm. un- right. underwear at the at, in and 16 candles, like, candles. no let's no dad's like gonna ask well, that yeah. that was a, an interesting part of that article to me because and like they took it out her but, mom was like looked at uh I'll john get, hughes I'll, I'll and was explain. like uh, it was like a it was a moment in the film when she comes home at the end and her dad goes sam where's your underwear and her yeah. mom was like looked at john hughes and said why would a dad know where his daughter's underwear or is ever even want to talk about yeah. it yeah right a dad would never want to ever even know that like they no. just assume that like they're wearing a chassis belt at all times exactly like, okay here's the underwear. here's the quote um it originally ended with the father asking asking sam what the hell happened to your underpants and my mom objected why would a father know what happened to his daughter's underwear they went and they should john squirmed oh. uncomfortably he didn't mean it that way he said it was just a joke a punchline. But it's not funny, my mother said. It's creepy. Mm-hmm. The line was changed to, just remember, Sam, you wear the pants in the family. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I, it's not funny. It, it is really creepy. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's and really at creepy. no point would your dad ask you where your underpants yeah. are. Why would he even know? Yeah. Why would he even know that? Exactly. No, he doesn't spend any time thinking about your underpants. And if no. he does, it's a red flag. Call the cops. Yeah. 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 Maybe call CPS. Yeah. Like, you know. Yep. <laughs> so you had a very visceral reaction to this article, Sarah. Yeah, no. Um, I I hadn't known anything about John Hughes before, but like when I but when I watched these films, I did feel like they sexualized Mo- 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 okay. Mo- Molly R- Ringwald. Like I saw them when I was yeah ten, eleven, twelve. Um, and it did feel like she was like the cute girl, even if she wasn't like the hot blonde. Yeah, she was still a cute girl in this mm-hmm. in these films. And mm-hmm. the the idea of this adult man seeing her headshot when she was fourteen and being like, "I'm gonna write a whole thing about you," like that just mm-hmm. sets off red, red 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 flags for me. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, I think. Anybody else have anything else to say about that? Um. um the 80s did such a bad job of talking about sex in a responsible way. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, and I think I brought this up in like half of our episodes. Fast Times at Ridgemont High tried. And oh, now yeah. they mention it in this article that, yeah. you know, that movie tried really hard to do that. But then it had other scenes like Phoebe Cates coming out of a pool with her boobs flopping out. Not Amy flopping Heckerling out. They didn't flop the out. Helm. They were gorgeously mm-hmm. coming. Yeah. I mean, they weren't flopping. I think that's why you should have women direct all movies because yes. Yes. Amy Cheers. Heckerling did Fast Times at Ridgemont High and it's still a paragon of virtue as far as these things are concerned. But, and even that scene yeah. where Phoebe Cates comes out of the, and we discussed this on the show when we talked about the movie last year, even this, the scene of her coming out of the pool with her and undoing her top was a parody itself on those things mm-hmm. happening yeah. in other movies about yeah. teenage boys because next we get a very unflattering image of him jerking it yeah. and then getting walked in on and like it was like a shattering of that fantasy yeah. but yeah I think Amy Heckel- Heckerling's fam- film still does hold up a lot yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. that reason we just love everyone named Amy yeah, but also <laughs> watch The Accused. I think it was like eighty seven. Oh or God, I've, I, it's, I, it's been a long time. That's a rough one. Okay, and it is rough. That's but like rough when one. I saw this, I was under ten, and I saw you this. Saw this under ten? I saw this when it came Holy out. Holy shit! Do I you guys know what The Accused is in about? In contrast to these John Hughes films, to and also to these, to these, fucking, the Porkies and yeah. Revenge yeah. of the Nerds films yeah. where women were just objects and they were yeah and then i see this reality of of the danger of being a woman and i'll never forget like the sex scene in this film is a gang rape on a pinball machine and jodie foster gets gang raped God, that's jodie what the foster movie is about some crap early in her career wasn't she well and then she's I put on she... trial too which is almost i mean yeah it's agonizing it was incredibly yeah. controversial when it came out because yeah. they were like how dare they how dare she make how dare jodie foster remember this right yeah how dare jodie foster make this movie where she gets gang how raped on a ping pong table time? because she like, was taxi i would say she's what? i would say she's in her late 20s probably okay because taxi yeah. driver came out what wait like, 20s maybe early 20s? 30s isn't taxi driver the one where she's like 14 years old yeah. yes uh, that was in the that was in the 70s, the 70s. Uh, she was like 14. i believe the accused came out in 87 88 okay mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So she was probably in her late 20s. And for me, this was the most realistic depiction of sex I had ever and still have ever seen on film. Really? Because the sex they show you in movies and in is pornography, it's all yeah. fantasy. It's all how we yeah. wish sex would be. It's all how and men we, wish sex would yes, be. Mm-hmm. And if yeah. we just had sex how we want to have sex on film, we'd all have much healthier attitudes about sex. But yeah. when I saw this rape, I knew, like, no, that's real. That happens. When yeah. I see pornography, I'm like, that never happens. Right. This doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. But when I saw that rape, I was like, that happens. And I knew that at like a tender age of like eight wow. or nine. Oh my God, you saw the video. That's so that. fucking intense. But <laughs> it's like impacted my life, I yeah. think, in such a really yeah. important way because yeah. mm-hmm. I've yeah. been aware of it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like the power of when my mom told me I couldn't sing. So I never oh, embarrassed God. myself on TV on American Idol. You should sing. Well, I Just will. And I do sing on want. our podcast quite, quite too often. That's good. But I can't carry a tune if it had a handle on it. But thank goodness my mom told me. Otherwise, I would be on stage embarrassing but myself. if you were happy, it doesn't matter. Good point. Good point. I don't know how American Idol and, and, and Dayrip have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> um, or do they? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I do continue. feel like the... Um, the TV show Girls always did a good job of showing sex in a way that mm-hmm. felt yes. like I was like, "This is what sex looks like," really and it is not pretty sometimes. First, <laughs> the first sex scene I saw was was in Titanic. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, it probably oh, was mine oh, too. Honestly, yeah. oh, Titanic was probably my first one too. I don't like that. share I don't what a listener thought happened during that sex scene. Please do. Oh Please. yeah, so I would good. love to know. One of so, our fans, so our favorite friends, very dear super fans, L, uh, saw this film when she was very young. Um, and she saw just the, the cut into the, the cab of the car where they're, mm-hmm. where they're bo- about to bone down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to the hand mm-hmm. on the fogged up yeah. glass coming yeah. down. Yeah. She thought one of them had killed the other. <laughs> that, it was a, that it was a murder scene, and she couldn't figure out why they were both still there That's afterwards. That's so weird. How did yeah, that I, person I saw die? When I was is this like, a ghost story now? <laughs> yeah. I saw when I was eight, and I was just, I didn't, I didn't know what, ha- what happened. Like, I, I, at that point, I still didn't really know what happened during sex, so I was just like, I didn't even know it was sex. I just was like, Gosh, yeah, I, can't even either, I think I just have this feeling of like how it was sexy. Yeah. And like I saw that movie way sooner than I should have because like my mom works at a church mm. and we were having a dinner up at and the And you weren't allowed such things. Right. Well, actually, here's the funny part. We were at a uh, dinner at the rectory, which is where the priests live, and it was mm-hmm. like a, a staff dinner, and my mom had brought us with her. And like it was the evening was winding down. My sister and I like needed to go to the other room. And so like, we were put in a back room, and they were like, oh, just put on a movie, whatever. And so yeah. we put on Titanic, because it was what was there. It's a historic okay. documentary. Yeah, and sure. And just put it on. Nobody was really supervising us, and I just remember watching Titanic. How my old, sister. Old you? It came out when you were five, right? I don't know. Yeah. I was like, I was probably like 10, 11. Oh my God, I, was I, was I, was, I was still pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. I was definitely in high school. Yeah. I, saw I, saw when I was eight. still very young. It was the first R-rated movie probably I like ever saw. Probably like 16, yeah. 17, yeah. 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 Yeah, it came out in December. I feel like or... maybe when I don't know what the first one was, but I feel like my first one of the first ones that I ever saw had to have been the sex scene between Kelly McGillis and Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise in Top Gun. Yeah. The yeah. the silhouetted sex scene with the uh, um with the uh, Berlin song. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh! Take my breath away. Oh, God. <laughs> Berlin live. They're like one of my I favorite fans. Love... I love. Well, them. I really I love that song sex in particular. To them any given yeah. Sunday. Oh my or god. But it definitely I think I've only raises seen your expectations in a way that it cannot be met at any point. Yeah. Nobody ever is lit like that for sure. I think no. the first sex scene I might have seen <laughs> First sex scene I might have seen was I think in Rocky Horror Picture Show. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Speaking okay. of silhouetted okay. sex. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. a really fun silhouette. Yeah. That, okay. That's a like okay. fun sex. But I also scene, remember though. I was like, we'll say six years old. This is about okay. to get uncomfortable. Okay. We'll say okay. six years old. Well, it's accidental. It's we accidental. have the scene of Susan Sarandon singing "Touch a Touch a Touch a Touch Me." Yeah. And uh, it's just you know Rocky putting his hands on her beautiful Susan Sarandon beautiful. breasts. My yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. And. That's the first time I remember getting a tingle. There was a at lot six, of at six years old. A lot of that. There was a lot of that stuff on TV when we were kids. Yeah, a yeah. lot. I was flipping around. Yeah, and it's it's anything, anything. Well, yeah. I saw The Exorcist when I was like eight. Yeah. Nobody right. should see that when that they're eight. That was the scary. My mom, when she said when that came out, she was like, it was the hands down like most horrifying, scary thing that anyone I mean, ever saw. I've never television. made it all the way through. Ever. I That's because you're Catholic. You can't. Yeah, I can't. can't do I can't it. do exorcism. The, saw, s- Satan will come after you. Like, but it was just, you know. Yeah. So didn't didn't well, care for okay. that masturbating so the thing scene about with me. the masturbating cross? Did you get that far? I don't think so. No. Okay. No. Well, no. Right after Rory's verbal, she'll go right to it. 
Uh, sorry, sorry, you were saying. No, I was just saying that when I watch horror movies one time, I don't think they're scary. Like I've ne- n- never actually seen a horror film that oh. the first time I watched it, okay. I thought it was scary. It's oh. the more I wa- watch yeah. it, the scary, scary, scarier it gets. That. So the wow. Omen I've seen probably like 16 times is okay. the scariest horror film to me because I've Ooh. seen it like 16 times. Okay, that's interesting. It's a <laughs> yes. cumulative so effect. Yeah, a lot in... Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think in general what we can say is that not only is it important that we look back mm-hmm. on this stuff and reassess it, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I of course you have to look at a thing through the time that it existed, but also who was in charge of making it and who was in yeah. charge, whose voice was in charge of, you know, spearheading the messaging there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And that's a thing that we're all, that we're doing by doing these podcasts. And yeah. I think that it's it was important. not Mo- Molly R- Ringwald's or Havlin Morris's responsibility to have, I don't know. They were too young, you but know? Do you yeah. think she had an interesting amount of control over it because she mentions in the breakfast club how there was originally a scene in it where the very attractive gym teacher Mm -hmm. was swimming nude in the pool and the principal was watching her swim like from a voyeuristic perspective yeah and she went to john hughes and was like no cut the scene and they cut the scene cut the actress everything and uh, she mentions like when in the hell would that ever happen i I know at a school on a Saturday, you would be fired immediately. Why would there you, was a first teacher all, in Georgia who was recently fired for something similar? It was a PE mm-hmm. teacher who was fired for doing something inappropriate yeah. in his office. I mean, I already feel bad for the way we objectified Rory Scovel like thirty minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't. don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. He's. I mean, I I'm feel sh- like it still wasn't even half as bad as what we get every day. Good that's for, or that's for sure. also. I'm still allowed to call say me someone's Rory. attractive and not <laughs> call me be objectifying call me. them. Um, I also feel like we've done much worse. Yeah. Oh, definitely yeah. have. Definitely yeah. have. Oh, I, I know I have. I think we've certainly <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. uh, spent a lot of time talking about Kurt Russell. Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze's oh, gyrating. Damn it. Pelibris. Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck, yes. Tom Not me, Selleck. but mm. Nicole and Hillary. I don't know. God, if I could have that mustache between my legs. On the Scoville yeah. scale? <laughs> On the He's a hot pepper. Oh, there we <laughs> go. Oh, nice. He's a spicy <laughs> meat ball, as they say. And I don't His wordplay is incredible. I don't think we could end the segment any better. Than <laughs> well, that's going to wrap it up for today's Lady Bits. Be sure to check out our special guests this month, Helen and Valerie, on their podcast, the Falling in Love Montage Podcast. Right now on the podcast, they are celebrating the month of May by revisiting... Uh, some of the films of Matthew McConaughey on McConaughey. You can listen to the Falling in Love Montage podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or any of your favorite third-party apps. And you can also find it at fallinginlovemontage.com or on their podcast network, Flying Machine. Thank you to all of our fans who came out to see Critical Crop Top Enters the Multiverse. Our live show may be closed, but you can always check out our video content on our website, criticalcroptop.com backslash videos, or you can check us out on the Thea app, which is a a brand new content platform for Atlanta-based artists. You can find Thea, that's T-H-E-A, on the web uh, using their mobile app, or you can watch on your desktop computer. So please check us out on Thea. Our channel is Critical Crop Top. Thanks for joining us this month to talk about the film I Feel Pretty with Helen and Valerie of the Falling in Love Montage podcast. We are going to be taking a brief recess. Uh, We're taking a little summer hiatus. So we will be uh, you will not be hearing from us uh, the month of June or July. Uh, So hope you guys have a fantastic summer. And uh, you can, of course, always continue the conversation with us on our social media. We're at Feminine Mistake Pod on Facebook and Instagram. And you can find us on Twitter at Fem Mistake Pod. I know you guys have been collecting those nervous breakdowns that you want us to read on the show. So please send that or any of your summer love letters to us at Feminine Mistake Podcast at gmail.com. Hey y'all, this is Melody and Erin, the hosts of Heaving Bosoms, a romance novel podcast. We're two long distance friends who gush, giggle, snark, and snort our way through a different romance novel each week. If you love fangirling about your latest read with your best friends, with or without wine, come join us for a deep breakdown of our favorite and occasionally not so favorite romance novels. 
Our recaps come with a heaping dose of unconditional friendship, open-hearted feminism, and our fair share of tangents. Come for the romance, but stay for the self-love recommendations we use to cap off each episode. You can find Heaving Bosoms on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so keep being a badass. And love yourself as much as you love sexy times and friendship. (laughs) Bye. Bye.